Pair ratings. Tottenham nil, Arsenal 1. Let's start with David Dreyer. Again, another fantastic performance from David Dreyer. Not even just the save from um, Kulusevsky, and he also made another save from Van der Ven from a corner kick or something. The way he was coming to collect the ball, like the crosses, he was taking even the last 10 minutes of that game. I think Raya came to collect the ball like four times, like those crosses, and then he comes and collects the ball and drops down to the floor. Absolutely fantastic, man. I loved every second of that from um, David Dreyer. Um, and just for all that and keeping a clean sheet on top of that, and he, he won the save of the, of, the, of the month last month. He was probably the, one of the players of the month um, last month as well. I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10. That, that is a fantastic performance from David Dreyer. I absolutely loved every second of it. 9 out of 10 for him. He absolutely deserves it. Um, but there was obviously a lot of talk now that Trantel has gone. I'm happy that um, you know he's performing well and he's performing incredibly well. You know, No mistakes. And he's, he's winning us points. Not only like just performing well, he probably won us the Aston Villa game and he got us a draw against Brighton because we could have lost that game after we got the red card. 9 out of 10 for um, David Dreyer. Center backs, Gabriel Magales. Ha, Gabriel, I don't, I don't usually give this particular rating. This is like maybe the seventh time the last four years I'm giving someone this, but that is what the performance was. Gabriel, 10 out of 10. Even before he scored a goal, I was giving him eight or nine out of 10 because the challenges he was making at the back, he blocked the ball like four times in the first 60 minutes of that game. And crucial blocks, like blocks from the edge of the area, like it would have been a shot on target if he, didn't, if he wasn't there. I'm going to give him a 10 out of 10. And on top of that, he gets the header that wins us the game, bullies the defenders out, muscles them. Look at the Tottenham players struggling. They're just watching him. Absolutely fantastic, man. Um, and considering on top of that, he... He should have made a challenge against Brighton. We considered a goal from that. And we could easily have considered against Aston Villa from his mistake against Watkins. Could easily have been a goal on that day as well. His performances have not, have not been great. So for him to step up right of the international break and put up a 10 out of 10 performance, big up to Gabriel, my defender. Brazil, man, Brazil. 10 out of 10 for Gabriel, for sure. That is for me, 10 out of 10. William Saliba. Again, another one, fantastic performance once again. The challenges in the back, the, the, the time Ben White made an error, that block from Saliba was absolutely incredible. Nine out of 10 for him as well. And, you know, Gabriel gets a 10 because he scored the winning goal. But Saliba was not bad himself. Saliba was absolutely incredible too. Um, the challenges, the, the tackle, last minute tackles. There's a couple of times he got the ball and pushed us forward. Like he ran forward. There's one time Trossard should have picked him and then Trossard made the wrong pass. Or Trossard or Martinelli, one of them. But Saliba was just incredible too. The clearances as well. Absolutely loved them. The combination between him, between him and Gabriel. Those two really deserve to win things, especially those two. I know Saka, Odega, those ones really, really deserve it. They've done a lot the last three seasons. But Gabriel and Saliba, man, that combination, fantastic, man. Like, we've not had a centre-back partnership like this since. Now, nah, I think they've surpassed um, Koscielny and Vermeulen and Koscielny and Matasaka. I think they're better than them by far, actually. Um, the last time he had such a good defence, I think it was Turen Campbell, and that is 2004. 2005 there. I don't think we've had this such, such a good combination in terms of centre-backs. Salib and Gabriel are fantastic and always available. They defend well. They have pace. If someone passes, they can cover. They can score goals as well. Fantastic. 9 out of 10 for Saliba. Timber. Let's go to the left-back. Julian Timber. Oh, Julian Timber. Before I even give him a rating, for this, he gets 2 marks extra. Just for this, he's already getting 2 marks extra. On the player ratings he handled that italian boy man he told him do you know who i am man do you know who i am vicario was running to his face like oh timber what I nah do you know who julian timber is his name is timber for goodness sake of course he's hard as a rock you cannot come to timber's face trying to bully him vicario two marks for that um julian timber now the rest of the performance oh my goodness He's, you know, Timber is not even a left back. I don't know if people know. Timber is not even a left back. It's like Benoit playing a right back. He's actually a centre back. The rest, of the, I, I'm going to check the stats after this. Let me let me let me check on Twitter as I talk to you guys if I can see anything from Gabriel Saliba team in terms of stats. But Timber today, I, the way he was getting the ball, so comfortable on the ball, the runs he was making, the challenges as well. He was even clearing the ball, heading the ball away a couple of times too. 
you know, Brennan Johnson was struggling throughout the game, didn't get to do anything. Um, and th this is a player that um, he, I, I watched him play for Netherlands um, over the international break. He came on um, around the 44th minute and he wasn't great in the second half. He wasn't that good. And people are talking about, ah, Timba, no think um, Timba is that good, is not really that good, blah, blah, blah. As, as they always say, you know, they, they usually can't wait to attack Arsenal players. But the rest of the performance man today, starting this game remember last game against brighton he actually went um i think he was he went down with an injury i think he was subbed off against brighton he was so tired but today team by i absolutely agree with you guys phenomenal performance the passes everything about him phenomenal today I i'm going to give him um the same with um with our boy um saliba so this is very high these players are getting very high i don't think i've given players like this like defenders everyone getting nine ten timber nine out of ten keeping a clean sheet um at, at um at their place um the the toilet stadium fantastic timber nine out of ten today absolutely fantastic there's a couple of stats here on twitter but um it is like gabriel um gabriel stats um let me just read it to you gabriel made the most clearances today he made the most ball recoveries he made the most blocks he scored the match winner. He did not lose a single aerial duel. So I gave him a 10 out of 10 before I seen, I saw these stats. And that, that makes me think I'm not going to change this. If those 11 out of 10, I would give him. He made seven clearances today. Six ball recoveries. Two blocks. Scored the match winner. Didn't lose a single aerial. <sighs> Who's next? Ben White. Ben White's performance wasn't um, as clean as Gabriel and um, Timba um, in that game. He lost the ball a couple of times, and I could easily have considered from them. From them, basically, he got saved by you know he got saved by Saliba and Gabriel. But the rest of the game, I didn't think um, he was bad at all. This season, one thing I've not seen from White, I don't know if it's a change of tactics. Uh, ben White last season got a lot of like goals and assists, like he was getting forward a lot. I, I don't know if this one is Timber being asked to push forward and then Bernard has been asked to stay behind, but he's not really overlapping Saka too many times, so he's just staying back and defending. I'm going to wait and see. I'm sure against Man City he's going to do the same, but after that, I'm going to be interested to see how he does in terms of defending. Is he going to be going forward or just staying back and then Timber and Calafiri, the ones who are going to go forward? I don't know. But uh, Ben White, I know first half not great, but we still kept a clean sheet. Son did not do a lot today, and he's the one who was marking him. I know he got past him maybe once or twice. There's a time in the first half he got past him so easily. I was like, no, you can't let that happen, but he covered it well. So I'm going to give my 8 out of 10 because the rest of the game, the likes of Son and Timo Van after coming on, they didn't really do a lot. So I'm going to give my 8 out of 10 because we kept a clean sheet. So it could easily have been a 7, but no. It's not easy to defend against the likes of Son. So 8 out of 10 for Ben White. So that is the defense. Rare 9. Uh, ben White, 8. Gabriel, 10. Saliba, 9. And then um, Julian Timba, 9. Hopefully that is fair enough. Let me know if you disagree with any of that. Midfield. Let's go to the midfield. Thomas Party. Hmm. Thomas Party. I mean, he didn't get exposed. You know, against uh, Maston Villa, Party lost the ball a couple of times and he could easily have considered from that. And even against Wolves, Party lost the ball like three or four times in that game. Today... I don't think Patty was bad. I'll rewatch the game again to see where they gave away the ball. I don't think Patty was bad today at all. I think I think this is probably his best performance this season. I'm going to give him eight out of ten. I'm going to rewatch the game in case I missed anything. But Patty today, eight of ten out of ten. I did not feel exposed in that game. I did not feel like, oh my goodness, the midfield is so wide open in that second half. Tottenham are going to create numerous chances. No. So I never felt that way, which means there was a midfielder there who was doing his job. So party today, I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. Uh, I didn't have a problem with his performance. Um, he also didn't really commit. There was a lot of yellow cards in that game, and party did not really commit fouls in that game. Jorginho. That is why Jorginho needed to get a new contract. He's not the best midfielder ever, although he was like third or fourth in the Ballon d'Or a couple of years ago. He doesn't always play. He only has like one year remaining now in his Arsenal contract, less than one year. We know when everyone is fit, Jorginho is not going to play a lot. Merino will be there. Rice will be there. Jorginho is not going to play a lot. But the one reason why I really wanted Jorginho to stay is because of such occasions. The guy comes on. He hasn't played. He hasn't started a game this season. He comes on. 
He takes the captain's armband. He leads the team. He plays well in midfield. Didn't really make too many mistakes today in midfield. A player who hasn't played a lot. He wasn't. He didn't even play for Italy during the international break. So he hasn't really been playing. But when you call upon him, oh yeah, call him upon, call upon him to do the job for you. He does the job for you. No problems. He played 90 minutes. Didn't get subbed off. Did his job. He was so tired. He also went down with like a cramp, like around the 90th minute. He was so, so tired. When it comes to the fights, Jorginho is involved as well in asking the referee what is going on. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm going to give him 8 out of 10. Jorginho and Pate did not want Jorginho and Pate to stay. Uh, to, not to stay. I wanted Jorginho and Pate to stay. Wrong word. I did not want Jorginho and Pate to start together today. Because I thought, man, that, that is a bit too slow. With Son and Madison in that midfield, it's going to be a bit too slow. Let's start Timber in midfield, but that is if Calafiore was there. But Calafiore wasn't there. Timber had to play at the back, and we didn't really have anyone else to play. But Jorginho and Pate, they've come on. They've done the job. Fantastic. 8 out of 10 for Jorginho. Captain as well today. Fantastic. Um, who else played in the midfield? Um, Trossard played in the midfield. Okay, now the, the rest of the ratings aren't going to be as high as the defenders. Um, Trotter did his job. He put in a couple of good crosses, you know, worked hard. Um, I mean, we didn't, like, create too many chances today. So I'm just going to give Trotter a 7. Energy-wise and all that, he did well. So I'm just going to give Trotter a 7 out of 10 for today. Nothing much to say about um, Trotter's performance. Uh, he was just okay. Um, didn't really miss any chances or anything. Crosses. Okay, that is fine. So seven out of ten for him, and I'm going to say the same about Harvard. They just worked hard. Didn't um, have a sort of chance. He had a header that was saved. Good save. Could easily have scored from that. Um, again, I'm also going to give Harvard um, a seven out of ten. Same with Trossard. Um, he had one chance really. The rest of the game worked hard. Was on the right side, left side. He got involved in the fights as well, telling people don't mess around with my teammates. Love it. Seven out of ten for him. Now the rest of the two players, Bukayo Saka. I don't think Bukayo Saka was astonishing or amazing or anything like that today. But listen, I don't need him to be absolutely amazing as long as you just have that assist or goal in that in this particular game. And also him missing out on Odegaard and also kind of Ben White because Ben White is not overlapping. Saka is missing something there and he's also definitely missing Odegaard. They have such a good connection with Odegaard on that side. Um, there's a pass, I don't remember who gave the pass. There's a pass in the first half where... Someone put the pass and Saka went through, like on the right side. If I remember who gave her that pass, maybe I could change the rating. I don't know if it was Jorginho or someone. But that pass to Saka, like he was getting involved in the game. Uh, a couple of poor corner kicks, but he he did um, he did what we needed, needed him to do and it mattered. So I'm going to give Saka... Um, I feel like I would have given him a 7, but he got the assist. So I'm going to give him an 8. Um, it is an 8 that is going down to a 7.5, not an 8 going to 8.5. So, you know what I mean? But Saka, 8 out of 10. He got the assist, and that was a fantastic corner. So for that, I'm giving him an extra mark. Because working hard and all that, winning winning fouls, and they were, they were kicking him apart in the first half, as always. 8 out of 10 for Bukayo Saka. Uh, what are we going to give this guy? Is this is so tough, Martinelli? 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 What are we going to give Martinelli today? Who? This is this is tough, Gabriel Martinelli. Now I'll tell you something that Martinelli did very well. I need to check. In terms of, again, like defending and challenges and coming back and winning the ball, Martinelli was incredible. He was one of doing this, like coming back and winning the ball back like this. He did this a lot of times. Like Tottenham are trying to counter attack, and Martinelli came back and won the ball. And I take that into consideration, especially in games like this. If you don't score or assist, which is his job, do something else. And I think in terms of doing something else, I think he did it. I think in terms of defending and doing that, I think he did. Actually, let me check if I can. I, I need to check his stats because it is very hard to rate Martinelli in this game. Let me check his stats. I want to see if I'm right in terms of, uh, is there stats on him on Twitter? I need to check. Like how many like ball, how many balls he won, how many recoveries he had, and all that. I think he's the one who also put in the cross for Harvard's header that was saved. I think he was the one who did that as well. That was a good cross as well. The chance that he missed, I think he should definitely have passed it to Saka. So there's that. Yeah, I've got it. There's actually David Dreyer, Gabriel, and um, Martinelli. One hundred percent tackles won. What? Martinelli won one hundred percent of his tackles. 
Hmm. That's 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 what I'm saying. I didn't know about the tackles. I just saw him like coming coming back and you know completing his um challenges and all that, and winning the ball back for us a lot of times. Now, 100% tackles. If you're not doing anything else in terms of scoring or assisting or your confidence is short, make sure you're doing something else. Um, he had one shot in the game, the one that you're talking about. He had it created two chances. One of them was for Harvard. I don't remember the other one. He made three tackles out of three. He put in three crosses. 10 out of 15 deals won. That is amazing. That's really good. Rating Martinelli as an attacker today, I would potentially give him six out of ten if he was just rating him as an attacker today he put in a couple of good crosses poor decision not to give Saka the pass that was it but defensive work he, that is incredible 10 out of 15 duels won for a winger that is really really good that is good and he also had six out of eight dribbles completed so I had to check his stats because um, I wanted to make sure like if I was right in terms of him coming back to defend because Attacking wise, he also did not impress me a lot today, apart from those couple of crosses. So, because he really worked hard, I'm not going to give him like four or five or anything like that. So, I'm going to give him the same. I've given um, a couple of other players in Trossard and. and uh, mm, I gave Trossard and, and Harvard a seven out of 10. Can we give McNeely seven out of 10 as well? I'm going to give him a seven out of 10. I think eight is too high. These stats are pointing out to it being an 8 out of 10 performance because this is a lot of very good defensive work. 100% tackles and 10 out of 15 duels won. That is very, very good defensive work. But we need Matnil to also do a lot of attacking work. That's why I'm not able to... If if he Let's say if he assisted Matt, if he assisted Saka on that occasion or if he, he passed that ball to Saka and then Saka scored or Saka missed, doesn't matter, I would have been giving him an 8 out of 10. So I'm going to stick with the 7 out of 10. I'm not going to give him 5 or 6 or anything like that because he worked very, very, very hard in that game. And defensive-wise, he did incredible work. There's even one time I remember they were trying to counter-attack us and Martinelli came back and won the ball and he went out for throwing. So, yeah, I'll rewatch the game again. Um, it, might, it might be 8. It might be, but because he was not that incredible attacking-wise, it also feels a bit high. But let me know in the, guy, in the comments. Just write Martinelli and then write what you're going to give him in terms of a rating, because defensive work he did incredible. So that is the rating for the players. Um, the players who came on, um, who came on, who came on, who came on, who was the first player to come on? Jesus and Sterling. I mean, it was only 10 minutes and we weren't really attacking. We were now defending. So I'm just going to give him a 6 out of 10. Jesus, 6 out of 10. He wasn't on for too long, honestly. Um, Sterling had an opportunity to to run on um, run on, uh, run to them I, I think he should have shot the ball in that on that occasion only on for 10 is defensive work okay just six out of ten we didn't see them enough let's wait for the next game if they're going to play more um who else came on Nuaneri. I'm just happy he came on um it's great to see him coming on because usually people say Atta doesn't really bring on youngsters especially players like Nuaneri had an opportunity he doesn't really come on in such games I'm just going to give him a six out of ten because I'm happy he came on six out of ten Mikel Ateta what are we going to give Mikel Ateta I know exactly what I'm going to give Mikel Ateta um because they said something after he signed in the new contract I celebrated when he signed a new contract and people in the comments were like Glenn, why the hell are you celebrating at, at the new contract? You know, the usual. He's been here for four or five years. He's not won anything. Blah. The usual, what people are usually saying. Um, but one thing that Atta has done, especially these big games, Tottenham, United, Chelsea, we go away to those teams expecting to win. This is the first time in... A, let, uh, let me just check. I don't think we've even beaten Tottenham three times in a row in such a long time. Now, you can also argue and say, yeah, we don't have players, blah, 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 because of him, he should have bought players, he should have not sold this one. Fine. But today's performance alone, defensively, fantastic. Um, the formation that he went for, I'm happy he didn't really put Havertz in midfield that much because that would have been... Now, for me, I didn't, I didn't care about Havertz playing in midfield this particular game because I knew it was going to be a lot of that, a lot of tackles, challenges, aerial balls and all that. I don't mind Havertz playing in midfield in this particular game. But he actually started up front. He agreed with the majority of you guys who wanted Havertz to stay up front. Trust side in midfield, tough situation. Not having Odegaard, not having Rice. A lot of people are saying, you know, listen... Um, let, let's see how, how good Atta is now that he doesn't have Odegaard. 
guys and this guy is Calafiori Merino. Let's see how good he is. We won the game. We kept a clean sheet. Fantastic uh, performance, especially defensive-wise. Um, second half, there's a couple of spells where we had uh, opportunities. We made sure to create those opportunities. Uh, poor decisions a couple of times from Martinelli and Harvards and Sterling at the end once. But apart from that, that was a fantastic uh, result. This this is bigger than the two other games that we've won at, um, at Tottenham because we didn't have all of those players. And on top of that, we are coming into this game after an international break where players like Saka had to play 150 minutes in those two games. You know, we are coming into this game knowing that the next two games are both away from home against Atalanta and Man City. Atalanta are the Europa League champions last season, so they are not a useless team. They won the Europa League last season. They beat Leverkusen 3-0. They're, they're not a useless team. On top of that, Man City after that. You know, on top of that, you're coming into this game with Tottenham. Solanke was injured, he's recovered, he was playing. Benton Kuh was playing. Van der Ven recovered, he was playing. So they had everyone. Um, and we still won. So let's let, let me read this stat. Arsenal have won six consecutive Premier League away games for the first time since 2013. Again, this is another thing. Another reason why I'm like, I, I, I get why people would say you don't like Ateta or whatever. It's, it's, it's your opinion. I, I don't mind it. But when I look at stuff like this, like we've played Aston Villa and Tottenham away this season. We've gone and kept clean sheets at those places. Those teams miss chances. That is their problem. That is not our problem. But going to Aston Villa, clean sheet. Going to Tottenham, clean sheet. Like there is no way four years ago we'd go to these teams and keep clean sheets. No way. His defense, again, another thing people say is Atta has bought a lot of defenders, which is true. Make sure you keep a clean sheet because you've bought a lot of defenders. So make sure the defense helps us, which, which it has. The defense is working. So he's bought a lot of defenders and you're keeping clean sheets against these big teams. That is fine. That is absolutely fine. Um, three of Arsenal's last four Premier League goals um, against um, Tottenham have been corners. Fantastic. Love it. Um, I don't care about the yellow cards. Since both players have been at the club, this will be the first time Arsenal have been without Rice and Odegaard in a single game. So this is also the first time you're not having both of them on the pitch at the same time. So this was something new. And um, I was trying to look at how many times we've won Tottenham three games in a row. It was a long time ago. We never we beat Tottenham even twice in a row. So that is fantastic. And because of all that and talking all that, I'm going to give my 10 out of 10 for today. Uh, fantastic. Missing all of those players, 10 out of 10.